In this video, we will work on adding a new item. We will have a button over here and clicking on it will open up a dialog box and then we will validate and add the, add the item and then we will also update the list over here. So let's see how we can work on it. So first of all, for adding a new item, I'm going to define a public property item. And just like we did in case of confirm delete model, I'm going to create a flag and I'm going to call it as confirm confirming item add and this will have a default value of false. Next, I'm going to define validation rules. We are going to define a rules array and here we will define validation rules for the three things first would be item dot name which would be required string and i'm going to define it a rule of minimum value of four next would be item dot price this would also be required this would be numeric and i will set a validation rule of between one and 100 and last one would be item dot status which should be a boolean value all right now let's define the method over here just like we had this one for confirming item delete we will have confirming item add and this time we are not going to have any parameter and i'm just going to set this flag to true I'll, I'll change this to item add all right now let's go to the view and we will have a add button over here so let us add the class flex and justify between i will wrap this heading into a div and then i will create another div i'll give it a margin right of two and this one will be a button so let's see how jetstream creates a button i'll copy this one and paste it over here i'll change this save to add new item and i'll define a wire click property over here this would call the method this one so i'll copy it and paste it over here so let us test this one in the browser uh, i can also remove this query because we no longer need it so i'll remove it from the view and i'll also remove it from the component i'll remove it from here and i'll also remove it from here let's reload it so we have this uh, button and this is styled using the default jetstream style if you want to check the styling of it you can go over here and within our resources we have this jetstream components and button.play.php and these are all the classes that are present in this button we can obviously override any one of them this has the gray color so let us override it to use something else i'll define a class and give it a color of blue 500 and on the hover i would give it a pg blue of 700 and if we reload the browser this looks fine so on the click of this uh, add new button we are calling this method and this is setting this flag to true so just like we did for the delete functionality we will create a new dialog model i'm just going to copy this one and paste it over here and i'm going to change this flag to this one so it will open up when this flag is true 
I'm also going to set this flag to false on the cancel and when this button is clicked I'm going to call the save item and I'll change this text as well as this over here and this one uh, I'll just put a dummy text for the time being this text uh, this slot will have our form so if I now reload it and click on this button we see that a dialog box appears and when we click on this never mind it goes away so now let us work on this form I'm again going to use some Jetstream components to create the form so if we have a look at this one we have the Jetstream component for label input box as well as for the error messages so I'm going to use these to create design of a form so I'm going to copy this over here and paste it over here in fact this one uses I'm going to copy some another one so yeah, this one will do because this one uses the text the previous one was a uh, password so let us make some changes the name be name and here I'll bind this to I'll remove this autocomplete and here I'll bind this to item dot name that is the name of our property and this would also be item dot name I'm again going to copy this one and define another one for price so I'll make the text changes this would be item dot price and all right now last one we need to define for the checkbox for the status so I'm going to quickly define it and I'm going to bind it to item dot status so if we now reload it click on the model we have this form displayed over here let us uh, give some margin top here as well as over here and now if we reload it now this one looks better so now let us work on this save item method which is actually going to save the item so i'm going to define this method over here so first thing we need to do is we need to validate so i'll define a validate method over here and then over here we are going to actually save the item so let us uh, check if validation is working or not so if i click on save we see that we are getting the validation errors because both of these fields are required so now that validation is working fine let us save it to the database we know that each item is related to a user so i'm going to call get the current user and the name of the relationship is items so i'm going to call the create method on items and over here i will pass the name which would be items name then price which would be items price in fact this needs to be this item and same thing over here and last thing is status so I'll also use a default value of zero in case the checkbox is not checked and then I'm going to set this flag to false so that the dialog box disappears and then over here I'm also going to reset our item so that form is cleared of any value so now if I reload it 
I would sort by ID descending so that any new item I added would be present at the top. I'll add a new item and I will give it a name of 31, price of 31. And I'll, if I save it, we see that the item has been saved and the listing has been updated correctly. Let's add another item. This time we are going to click on the checkbox as well. So if we do that, we see that that is also working fine. So with that, we have successfully implemented the add functionality using Tailwind model.